Revolution Radio proudly presents, live from the heart of the Blue Ridge, Roanoke, Virginia, it's the Just Bernard Show with host Bernard Alvarez. Join Bernard as he shares topics that reveal the real matrix and empower your human experience, including world liberty, the esoteric, suppressed technologies, spiritual ascension, and human consciousness. Humanity has awakened, and our time has come to realize our full potential. And now, live from the Star City, your host, Bernard Alvarez. So, um, let's go ahead and uh, kind of do a little reminder of what we did last week, um, for those of you that did tune in last week and caught part one of Awakening the Higher Consciousness, uh, I covered a lot of the foundation and hopefully expressed a little bit of um, the understanding of what this consciousness class is all about and quite honestly, what our consciousness is all about. Uh, just a few things to, to remember. Uh, my favorite, of course, was where we started off literally where we started off is that bliss is our natural state of mind bliss is our natural um state for our souls and it is through the polarity and the d land of duality that we live in that uh, we do live in a world of illusion and because of that our, our ego seems to kind of take control so we covered a lot of uh, what the ego is, what awakening is versus enlightenment, and what the state of enlightenment is, and what are some examples of awakening. Awakening being those aha moments, those epiphanies that we all have on occasion. And the goal of it, of course, of, of doing this work is enlightenment, uh, whether you want to call it nirvana, samadhi, whatever terminology that you have. But for me to break it down into layman's terms, is to be a master of our thoughts versus our thoughts being our master and by expanding on the how should we say uh, i think we talked about it as going between the thoughts uh, thoughts are constantly coming and going we constantly have a stream of consciousness and our stream of consciousness is our reality and if our stream of consciousness if we take it too seriously as our only reality, we can make ourselves very uncomfortable and we lose that connection to our higher self and our connection to our spirit and our soul. So the synopsis basically was to understand the process of thoughts and to begin to expand on that space between the thoughts. Uh, but how do we do that? We do that by mastering our thoughts and that's what we're going to be working on today. And let me see where we left off, actually. So, uh, last week I left you with um, some exercises to begin working with, and I hope that uh, you did take them into account and maybe practice them a little bit. Uh, again, the focus is not to talk about the practice, not to read all these books, not to watch all these shows, not to watch all these videos, but to actually learn from it and to utilize and practice. Because if we're not practicing, we're not really we're, we're just being an observer. We're being entertained. Um, and that's fine. But uh, I know many of us want to achieve some type of peace and enlightenment within our lives. So with that being said, last week I did talk about the self-talk that goes on in our mind uh, to, to address uh, the certain vibration of certain words. And two of the words that I left you to kind of filter out or to think about to get rid of or changing was the idea... Sorry, my cats are being loud. <laughs> um, the idea of wanting and needing and to acknowledge the fact that want and need come from a place of ego. Yes, of course, we all need to breathe. We all need to have a roof over our head. We all need to, you know, eat, and pay taxes, whatever you want to call it. Um, but when we use words like want and need, that has literally the vibration of of disconnection it's um it sounds external and we're keeping that separation from the inner and the outer by using want and need because we're we're 
perceiving something as being out there that we need to bring to us. So what I asked you to do was to remove the word want and need from your stream of consciousness and replace it with the word feel. I feel I would like that piece of chocolate cake. I feel I would like to have that job. I feel that I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. I, not that I need to or that I want to, but I feel. And notice the difference in the vibration when we replace want and need with the word feel. As well, I also talked about um, positive affirmations. And again, this is all uh, tools and steps into creating a new stream of consciousness. Every waking moment, you are living in a stream of consciousness. And who's going to be in charge of your stream of consciousness? Is it going to be your a subconscious mind that is constantly replaying that broken record? Or are you going to take the steps to change that? And that's what we're going to talk about today. And we're going to do some more um, practices and hopefully uh, work toward uh, utilizing some type of mindfulness practices. So how do we move into a state of enlightenment? And that is to begin self-mastery. And self-mastery is when your mind, your thoughts, your actions, your speech, and your senses are under your control with self-mastery achieving higher consciousness becomes possible so let's look at some of these um, we talked about mind we talked about thoughts actions speech and senses uh, i'm always talking about and again i'm repeating myself from last week i talk about being vigilant what you expose your senses to what music are you listening to uh, are you conscious of the programming that's going into your subconscious i spoke of a friend who used to leave Fox News on 24 hours a day, whether they were watching it or not, that was feeding into their subconscious mind. Uh, when we listen to uh, commercial radio stations or commercial television, all those commercials are being programmed into your subconscious. Uh, you know, many times I've caught myself singing a jingle and it's like, where did I get that from? And while I haven't been, uh, I've been vigilant not to watch or listen to commercial music or television, I still have jingles from the 70s and 80s popping into my head. So talk about programming. Uh, being aware and being vigilant as to what we look at. Uh, what are we allowing ourselves to see? Are we allowing ourselves to see beauty of life? Are we allowing ourselves to enjoy beauty in life and color? Or are we, or have we created a very like ugly, uh, low vibration, uh, not full of life, not a creative uh, environment that we live in? Uh, for me, it doesn't matter how much money you have. It really doesn't. I, I make do. I really do. And uh, little by little, I've created for what I consider a very safe and happy space uh, to look at that I consider beautiful. I actually work right outside a window. I work inside a window. <laughs> so I can see greenery. So I can see trees. You know. So what are you looking at? What are you looking at all day long? Trying to put yourself into a place that you can actually see um, greenery or something beautiful. And again, you don't need to have money to be in a beautiful environment. Uh, you can create it. So let's think about, or let's talk about, I should say, uh, our stream of consciousness. So right now you're having a stream of consciousness. You're listening to me, but oftentimes uh, your stream of consciousness will, lo you'll lose control of your stream of consciousness. All of us do. I do, and I have to catch myself, and I'm sure everybody listening and watching does as well. So what happens when we are how shall we say, in a downward spiral or when we are in a state of a lo loss of control or mastery of our thoughts. Quite simply, when you want to, I don't want to say control your thoughts, but to stop a negative stream of consciousness, I say this all the time, just stop and take a deep breath. And in your mind, say the word stop. I know that sounds very cliche or very simple, but the reality of it is just by having the mindfulness and the consciousness to take a deep breath in through our nose and just say the word stop. So do it with me. Take a deep breath in through your nose. And in your mind, say stop. You don't need to yell it. Just say 
stop. And right there, you're throwing a wrench into the, that stream of consciousness, so to speak. It's been proven that we can change our stream of consciousness in 90 seconds. So if we can focus, let's say you're spiraling or, I mean, as someone who's had anxiety attacks in the past, I can relate to this. Let's say we're having a little bit of anxiety about something or we're feeling a little bit worried about something and you're losing control. All we have to do is focus on something else for 90 seconds and that thought or that spiral or that stream will begin to dissolve and you will be able to direct and master your thought into the direction you want to. So just focusing your mind on breath, focusing your mind on the word stop, you can even count up to 90 seconds if that's what you'd like to do. Quite honestly, I count to 100. Uh, I utilize this as well at night when I'm having a hard time sleeping. If, I, you know, 3 o'clock in the morning, you're getting all these great ideas. What am I going to do tomorrow? And, you know, what should I have done today? Uh, and I sometimes can't sleep because my mind starts being very creative at 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh, I find that uh, just counting up to 100 uh, will literally put me to sleep. I know that sounds like counting sheep, and now I get it. <laughs> I never quite understood the counting sheep thing. I've never visualized sheep. But literally just counting to 100 helps dissolve that stream of thought. So what else can we do to master our thoughts? And why? I, we covered why is it important, but why do we want to put this into practice is because by utilizing our ability to observe our thoughts, by utilizing the, the tools that we're talking about here to step out of our thoughts, uh, we realize the illusion that the thought really is. We must always come back to remembering that we are infinite divine beings uh, who have the ability to be in this wonderful meat suit and we have the ability to have this wonderful life if we so choose but we can choose uh, where our minds are. And we do that by using, utilizing tools like these mindfulness tactics. And the other one is remaining in the moment. How many times have you caught yourself thinking about where you're going? Um, a great example for me, I remember uh, back in September when I finally got to go on my first vacation of five years, uh, I ended up booking a massage, and I haven't had a massage in like 20 years. I was like, let me get a massage. So I'm in there, and I'm not utilizing the, the moment. I'm not feeling the, you know, the relaxation. I was thinking about where I was going to that night and who I was going to see and when did I have to come home. And, I mean, of all places you want to be in the moment is when you're getting a nice massage. <laughs> so... Uh, I had to, again, bring myself to the moment uh, by, we, by, by ruminating on you know, the past, by worrying about the future. We are not in the moment. We are not living the moment. And we have the ability to really enjoy life if we can stay in the moment. Some of the things that we can do to help us come to the moment is simple grounding. And you don't even need to do the whole, you know, extending your roots into the earth or anything like that. No, you don't even need to do that. All you need to do is focus on the bottom of your feet and put your feet on the ground and just notice how it feels, the sensation of your feet touching the ground. And suddenly, all the other thoughts begin to dissipate and you are, you're here. You're here now. Uh, it's very simple. It's very grounding. And in order for us, again, to remain in inner peace and clarity, it's important that we stay in the moment and not be distracted by rumination, speculation, and worry. When you're in that state of, how shall we say, out of control thinking of that worrying, uh, what can we do? Well, the, many times when we're worrying, we're, it's just mere speculation. We're worrying about not getting the job. We're worrying about um, that girl not saying yes or that guy not saying yes or we're worried uh, about a medical test or something like that. And what happens? We begin to spiral. We begin to speculate. But the reality of it is, is we need to stop that and say to ourselves, I don't have control over this, but what can I do right now what can i do right now to help the situation 
or to further advance the situation as, as we see it? How can I change the situation right now? And merely by asking yourself, how can I change the situation right now will put you in a whole new thinking stream, a new stream of consciousness. For example, um, worrying about a medical test. I've had to do that in the last couple of years. Worrying about what's going to happen, what's going to be the result. By saying, what can I do right now? I can tell myself, well, I could drink more water to be healthier. I could lower calorie intake. I can smoke less, drink less, whatever it is, and acting on that. And that's to the next key is to create an action and follow up with it. In order for us to master our thoughts, we must master our day-to-day -day reality. And again, th this is to utilize and to remind us that within this world of illusion, within this perceived reality that we live in, instead of being, how should we say, like a candle on the wind being blown back and forth by the the world around us. I mean, a great example is uh, what I call a uh, Facebook reactive syndrome. You know, people allow their moods to be changed by what's happening around them. Um, a lot of us m live our day to day bouncing around like a pinball from bumper to bumper being pushed this way, being pushed that way. And that is not the way to enlightenment. That is not the way to acknowledge spirit and to move uh, with to move with spirit and to move uh, with a uh, higher self intention so what we have to do is we have to I don't want to say plan every moment but for me for me what I like to do is I, I like to keep an agenda I like to keep a schedule and of course things change and you want to make room for spontaneity I call it a schedule but it started off as goals set up goals for yourself throughout the day my goal is to uh, wake up um, have a cup of coffee and meditate a little bit just kind of take a five minute meditation my goal is to get a 100 posts schedule for my facebook page my goal is to write the outline for my radio show my goal is to do research on the guest that's coming on my show my goal is to think of new ways and new ideas to help the diversity center that i work with Creating these little goals, even if it's creating a goal to take a break, even if it's creating a goal to contemplate, uh, to ruminate on positive things, even if it's just creating a goal to brainstorm and completing and following up on that goal, somewhere in our subconscious mind, we begin to feel like we're getting control back. And when I say we're getting control back, I'm not talking about the ego. I'm talking about the spirit your soul begins to get control back or that peace of source that's within us that peace that connects us to the everything starts to feel like it's getting control back remember the ego is reactive the soul is proactive if we are reacting to everything around us and we are living our lives reacting due to the actions that happen outside of us we're not living from the soul we are not living from the spirit so just by creating little goals throughout your day, you begin to let your soul get uh, control back. I, I don't like to use the word control, but unfortunately in this 3D world, uh, there's not really a, a term I can think of. <laughs> Alignment might be better, but I don't think it makes the emphasis that I'm trying to get across. One of the other ways that we can create self-mastery is to be able to observe our thoughts without judgment and I know many metaphysicians and teachers talk about this and it is very difficult and it comes through practice practicing what we just talked about practicing our ability to say stop I'm not going to be controlled by these thoughts to create goals and to act on those goals are just the beginning to give us the ability to come into alignment with our higher self and with our spirit again accelerating our path towards enlightenment but in order for us to do that we must be able to observe our thoughts to be the watcher the world is you know I, again a cliche the world is a stage and we are merely players to quote was it getty lee <laughs> it's a show it really is a show and everyone 
literally is wearing a mask, an identity. Everyone is living their story as we are too. Now, if we are living the story and if we are all players in this, why must we identify with the story? And in that, and in doing that, why was why must we identify with our thoughts? The key to self mastery and the key to living in alignment with our higher self is to be able to separate ourselves from our thoughts to be the observer to say oh i kind of see it like um waves i see waves like in the ocean and with that we're taking a commercial break and i will pick up where we left off we'll be right back as well i just want to remind everybody it is coming up september this year we are taking we are going on a cruise down to the virgin islands uh, with me and 20 or 30 other uh, amazing speakers and teachers uh, from Casadega, uh, Miriam Delicato from uh, Canada. So many people are going to be joining us, and we'd love to have you uh, join us as well. It's going to be seven days on the Harmony of the Seas uh, cruise ship, which is a really, I think it's the second largest cruise ship. I've never been on a cruise, so it'll be a lot of fun for me. And uh, not only are we going to be doing workshops every single day, I'm also going to be doing some private uh, VIP sessions with uh, individuals and groups. So come and join me in September and let's go cruise the Caribbean. Go to spiritheartcruise.com. Someone's got a Harley out there. I wish I had one. Anyway. <laughs> Speaking of, oh, see, I said wish instead of think and want. There we go. Wish might be a good one. Um, anyway. So let's talk about what we were talking about before. Uh, I was talking about how we can separate ourselves from our thoughts and how to uh, look at our thought, thoughts objectively. And the way that I utilize, the technique I utilize to do this, uh, as I was saying earlier, is I, I see and visualize uh, like waves on the ocean rising up, cresting, and then going back into the hole. And then, of course, the next wave comes up, crests, and goes back into the, the whole ocean. The same thing goes with our thoughts. Each thought has a beginning where it rises up. It has a crest when it has full or full attention. And then every thought, of course, begins to dissipate and go back into the void or whatever you wish to call it. When we can utilize... When we, we can utilize this type of tool to kind of just watch our thoughts and become the observer of our thoughts. Uh, in doing so, that's how we learn to go between the thoughts. And we're going to talk, we're going to actually do a little uh, energy work and meditation work in just a few minutes uh, as soon as I finish going over some of these uh, topics and tools. But we must remember again to observe our thoughts objectively for example um when we are in an argument with somebody for a uh, great example is conflict people don't like conflict nobody likes conflict especially when it's with somebody that we love that is a very good opportunity for the ego to take over distract us and keep us spiraling you know playing that broken record what'd you do you're a horrible person they're a horrible person etc 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 this is when we utilize those tools of stop. We stop, we take a breath, and then we try to become objective. What, instead of speculating, come back to the moment, you know, put your feet on the ground if you need to, and instead of speculating, ask yourself, why am I so angry? Or why do I feel so hurt? Or why did I act the way that I did to hurt or anger the other person? We have to stick to the facts. This person is upset. I am upset. They're mad. I'm sad. Whatever it is, but stick to the facts objectively. Looking at our, at our thoughts objectively gives us the ability, A, to create solutions, and B, it takes the power uh, away from the ego thinking and, and, and how should we say, uh, conspiring to create more negative thoughts, so to speak. Um, so think about that. The next time, the next time you have something like that, don't uh, blame yourself. Don't blame the other person. But look at the facts. What happened? Why am I thinking like this? And just step back and look at um, the whole situation as a whole, instead of allowing yourself to go into reactive mind. 
again, taking a breath and being objective. And then, actually, lastly, because I want to move on. I have so many of these points that I can go on and on and on about, but I want to get to the meditation part. I want to go back to the idea of creating a comfortable environment. Um, our outside world affects us profoundly, profoundly, whether it be the environment we work in, whether it be the people we surround ourselves with, whether it be the, the home that we keep, how we, how we move things around, how, how clean we keep it, whatnot. We, we do have the ability to create a comfortable and beautiful environment, even if it's um, just a comfortable chair, <laughs> you know? Um, for example, when I need to relax, uh, I've, I have an altar over here. I'm sure many of you have seen me post pictures of it. I have an altar and I have my little tiny little recliner over there. And when I want to create a comfortable environment, I'll put on some, I don't know, Enigma or Enya or something like that. You know, whatever soothes your soul. I'll put on some music. I will light a candle. Uh, I have a wonderful uh, diffuser, uh, an aromatherapy diffuser, and I'll put in some lavender or something like that. And I'll just sit in the chair and just absorb the the energy that I've created. You have the ability to create a comfortable environment no matter where you live, no matter uh, how much money you have or whatever. I, you know, I, I always hear people say, oh, I, I can't afford this, I can't afford that. Even if you have a, a cement slab to sit on, you know, put some, grab some flowers and put them around you, whatever it is, be creative know that you have the ability to create a comfortable place. And in creating that comfortable place, see what you can do to bring that comfortable place with you throughout your day. And what I mean by that, using the same tools to create a, a comfortable environment, some place where you feel relaxed and some place that you can kind of turn the world off. Even if it means going out into nature, even if it means going to sit in your backyard or sit on your balcony in your condo, wherever it is. Remember that you, you have the ability to do that. As well, at once we've created a comfortable environment, that, that helps us to relax, right? And throughout your week and throughout your day, you're going to have moments where you do feel peaceful. Take note of that. Think about the places and remember and recall the places that make you feel relaxed or that make you feel calm, that make you feel connected to your spirit. Uh, you may even want to utilize it in your meditations to have a, a happy place. You know, we talk about, oh, I'm going to my happy place. Uh, for me, quite honestly, I think about uh, the Mill Mountain Star. For some reason, I love it up there. I find it very relaxing to look down on the rest of the city and when I just need to relax, I think about walking a trail uh, up the mountain. There's a trail that goes up the mountain, and I'll, I'll just visualize being on one of the trails. Uh, the same, you can utilize the same technique, whether you're visualizing being on the ocean that you've been to, uh, being at Disney World with your family, you know, someplace that brings you peace and makes you happy. You can recall that uh, and utilize that. And take note. Take note of the the moments throughout your week that bring you peace and that bring you um, mindfulness and, and happiness and do what you can to allow more of those uh, situations and allow more of those events to happen in your life. And I'm going to kind of jump ahead here because I do want to be able to fit in this meditation that I'm talking about. So we just talked about some keys to master our thoughts, you know, and, and don't get me wrong, that's probably one of the most important things in understand, besides understanding what awakening is and enlightenment is and understanding that our souls prefer to live in bliss in a natural state of bliss, there are other things that we can do to move up or move through toward an age of enlightenment within ourself, and that is to continue to advance spiritually. Um, it's important that we continue to do what we can for spiritual growth, uh, whether it be practicing mindfulness, whether it be writing, uh, whether it be eating healthier, whether it be meditating more. There are so many aspects uh, and tools that we can utilize to advance on a spiritual level. 
I find that the, the number one thing that we all can do, and we can do this immediately, is to practice compassion and kindness. Uh, it is important to be kind wherever we can. It is very important to practice compassion wherever we can. And in doing so, by bringing out these traits, because these are traits of spiritual bliss. These are natural traits within our soul. And when we practice kindness, when we practice compassion, we will continue to build that foundation uh, for our own spiritual path, as well as making the world a better place for everybody else. As well, we want to continue acknowledging and unfolding our consciousness. What can we do to continually expand our mind, to expand our horizons? Uh, what are some some things that we've never done that we've always wanted to do to to unfold our consciousness uh, the soul is we are literally covered in this dark veil of illusion we are literally uh, incarnated into a body where we not many of us can remember our past lives not many of us can remember or recall that state of bliss and that state of union with the divine with source consciousness and there is this separation, so we must constantly work toward unfolding our consciousness and removing those layers of that dark veil that we call the illusion of life. And in doing so, um, I find that third eye meditation is very, very helpful. Uh, along the path toward enlightenment, we do want to acknowledge our pineal gland. It's, it's right right behind our forehead uh, it's filled with DMT which is a natural hallucinogenic they want to call it but if you've done any research about the pineal gland if you've done any research on DMT or whatnot uh, it is uh, how should we say it's a chemical that helps us to remember that union with divine that union with humanity with life with love um, so practicing third eye meditations and awakening our third eye uh, is a part of that unfolding consciousness and moving through the steps to a higher consciousness. So what I'd like to do now, we've got a few minutes, I'd like us to be able to do a meditation to incorporate some of the things that we talked about today and work toward, and hopefully this will give you some tips and tricks to awaken your, thir your third eye. So if you'd like, and please join me, and uh, what I'd like you to do is to close your eyes. You can follow along with me. I'm going to put on a pretty picture here. There we go. Let's take a deep breath. Close our eyes. And just slowly exhale. And no matter what you're thinking, tell it to stop. Stop. And again, take a deep breath in. Feeling your belly. And gently exhale. Allow your body to relax. And one more time, let's take a deep breath in through our nose, filling our belly. And gently exhale. And now let's return to our normal breathing rhythm, and I'd like you to focus on the bottom of your feet. Feel the bottom of your feet touching the earth, touching the floor, the carpet. If you don't have your feet on the floor or the carpet, please put them on the floor now and feel the sensation of your feet coming in contact with the earth. And just take a moment to reflect on your connection to the earth. Now let's bring our attention to our legs, becoming aware of the muscles, the bones, and the blood moving through them, and allowing our legs to become very relaxed, very calm, very quiet. Allow them to feel comfortable and feel the relaxation moving through your legs. Now bringing our attention to our groin, our buttocks, our hips, 
the bottom of our bellies and feeling the muscles and nerves and the blood becoming very relaxed very calm bring our attention now to our chest in the center of our back and our shoulders and our neck feeling all the bones the muscles and the blood becoming very relaxed very calm and now bring our attention to our upper arms our forearms our wrists our palms and our fingertips feeling the bone the blood and the muscles becoming very relaxed Now bring your attention to the back of our head, our scalp, our brow, our cheeks, our jaw, allowing our jaw to become relaxed, all the muscles in the face, the bones and the blood becoming very relaxed. And I'd just like you to take another deep breath in through your nose, feeling your entire body with relaxing light. And feel the energy coming in through your nose, feeling your entire blood system with relaxing and healing, calming light. Again, taking another deep breath, feeling very relaxed. Now I'd like you to bring your attention to the space just between your eyes, above your brow. And from the perception of feeling it on your forehead, I want you to bring your perception to inside your forehead, to that space just between your brow. And visualize it like a tiny bright silver light. Taking a deep breath in. And seeing that bright little light getting a little brighter just on the inside of your forehead. Perceiving it just from the inside of your eyes. And I'd like you to just see that light getting a little brighter and brighter. Feel the sensation of that pineal gland beginning to vibrate beginning to awaken sense the light moving into your brain moving into your eyes and feeling and filling your entire head with this bright light coming from your third eye And just take a moment to sit in this light. To feel the sensation of your pineal gland vibrating ever so gently. Like a low hum. And bring that hum to the third eye. Allow the sensation to move down your neck, down into your arms and into your fingertips. Mm. Allow the sensation to go down your body, down your chest, down into your sacral area, your hips. Mm. Allow the sensation to go down your legs, to your knees, down to your feet and into the earth. Feeling the hum from your third eye, moving down your body, 
down into the earth. Um. Just feeling very relaxed. Allow your mind to sit and wander. Allow whatever images to come to you. Allow yourself to feel at peace and calm. Um. Now remembering the state Remembering this calm. Taking a snapshot in your mind's eye. Slowly bring yourself back to this place that you are sitting. Feeling your feet. Feeling where you're sitting. Feeling your back, your neck, your chest, your face, your fingers, your eyes, your forehead. And slowly bring yourself back to your daily waking consciousness. Feeling grounded. Feeling refreshed. And gently open your eyes. With your feet touching the ground. Keep your connection to the earth. With your third eye still vibrating. Keep your connection to your inner self and your higher self. And take note on how long this lasts. Take note on when the distraction comes. And remember, you can pull yourself back. You can pull yourself back to your higher self at all times. It's just a matter of remembering to do it. It's just a matter of remembering who you are. Remembering we come from a natural state of bliss. This is all an illusion. This is all distraction. But it's also a playground where we can have fun, where we can love, we can live, we can laugh. We can make the world a better place. We can love our animals. We can have beautiful life. All of us. Remember that. So last but not least, I just want to remind everybody, we are on, all on a path of enlightenment. We are all on our own spiritual path. Don't judge yourself. Don't judge your path. Don't judge other people's paths. We're all on a path. It's not my place to tell you you're wrong or you're right. And it's not my place to tell me I'm wrong or I'm right. I've got to learn what I need to learn. You need to learn what you need to learn. And just allowing the process to unfold. But we must give it permission. We must allow the process to unfold and not resist it. Resistance is a reaction. Reaction is of ego. Ego is great for counting money. Ego is great to get to work on time. Ego is great to tie your shoelaces. But as a state of consciousness, not so good. I love you all. I will be back next week. I've got a wonderful guest. Hillary Ramo will be joining me. Uh, she was on with me a few years ago at No Dapple, and we're going to talk about all of her work since then. I love you. Have a wonderful week.